Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to a brand new Roblox Studio video. My name is Floppy, and in today's video we'll be going over how to make an item spawner in Roblox Studio. In this tutorial we'll go over multiple different ways a player will be able to spawn an item, such as an item spawns when a player clicks onto a part, a player steps onto a part, and a player clicking onto a GUI. This system can be used to spawn anything from a basic building part to an in-game car. Well, without further ado, let's begin the tutorial. So for starters, you want to make sure that your explorer and properties are enabled. If your explorer and properties are not enabled, head up to the top bar here, click on view and enable explorer and properties and they should show up somewhere over your screen. Now that you've got your explorer and properties enabled, we're going to move on to system one. So the first system we're going to be going over is going to be a player clicking onto a part using a click detector. So basically how this is going to work is there's going to be a part here and then when a player clicks onto that part in game, then your item will spawn. So first of all, you want to now go and install insert your item that the player is going to be spawning. As I mentioned, it could go, it can range from a just a normal building part like this to maybe like a car in the game, for example. Really up to you, but go and insert your item that the player is going to be spawning. So for this tutorial, I'm just going to be using a car from the toolbox here called the Jeep. So we've got our item now. The next thing that we want to do is you now want to actually go and position your item where you want it. So obviously, I'm, I've got a very plain basic base plate here but say you had for example say you were using a I don't know a candle you go and place the candle in the game where you want it so you go and move this model wherever you would like it so for example in our instance here we've got a car so let's just say we're creating a race game this is now the road and the, our car is going to be spawning there exactly where you want the car to spawn you need to go and put the car exact oh goodness me you need to go and put the car exactly where you want it to spawn so if it's on a table you put it in in the position on the table if it's here on the road I'm going to be putting it in the position in the center of the road, for example, because now what will happen is we'll eventually move this to a folder. And then when we actually go and click on that button, it is then going to spawn it in this exact location. So now that I've gone and chosen the position where my item will be spawning, I'm going to go click on our item. I'm going to go to the parent here in the properties. I'm going to click on workspace. And now we're going to go and put it in our server storage. And as you guys can see, the, now the um, the vehicle or well, our item has gone and disappeared because it is in this server storage. Storage. Now we've got our item that we've gone and positioned in our server storage. We now want to go and create our button that the player is going to be clicking to actually go and spawn the item. So for this instance, we're just going to be using this very basic simple part. We'll leave it just like that. You can customize it to how you would like. I'm then going to click on the plus button and insert a click detector. If you don't see it there at the top, you want to search it up. We've got our click detector. Then I'm going to click on the plus button and insert a normal script. So now that you've inserted a script inside of the part with the click detector, you want to go down to the description of this video, copy and paste script one. It's going to be called something like script one button script. You go, you want to go and copy that, bring it back to Roblox Studio, remove all the previous code, and then paste in the new code. And as you guys can see, it's a very basic, simple, straightforward piece of code. I'm going to quickly go over it here just so you can kind of get a little bit of a better understanding and also go and change some things accordingly to make sure that it works for your game. Anyway, here on line one, it goes local click detector equals script.parent.clickdetector. That identifies our click detector inside of our part. So it goes script.parent.ourClickDetector. Then it goes local item equals game.serverStorage.yourItem name. Now, this is our item that we put inside of our server storage just at the start of the tutorial. So you want to go and change your item name to whatever your item is actually called. So my item is called Jeep. So I'm just going to go and put it like that. Obviously, if you've got multiple different types of Jeeps, they need to be named accordingly. So for example, you can't have five different Jeeps because then the script won't be able to identify on which one you actually want to spawn. So you need to go and say, for example, you, each different item needs to have a different name. Even if it's just Jeep 1, Jeep 2, that also works. But we've gone, we'll just go and put Jeep back here and then type in Jeep over here. Just adding it into our script. So then here on line 3, it goes local debounce. This basically stops players from being able to spam the button and spawn many, many items very quickly. This basically is like a little bit of a timer or like a like slowdown, I guess you could say. Then here on line 5, it goes click detector dot mouse click connect function. So when our click detector has got a mouse click, it creates a function. Then if not debounce, then so if our debounce is false, then it is going to change our debounce to true. Then local new item equals item clone. So this is identifying our new item. It's creating a variable for our new item. So our new item is our item that we identified up here, which is our Jeep. It then clones that item inside of the server storage. And then it changes the new items parent to the game.workspace. So it basically what it happens here is it duplicates this 
Jeep area here. It duplicates it, it goes to the parent, and it sets it to the game workspace. And then what will happen there, if we had to go and do that as like a little bit of a test here, we change the parent to game workspace, then the item is gonna be spawned in that position that we had allocated it earlier. But we obviously don't wanna do, don't want to go and do that now. So we've got our new item dot parent equals game dot workspace, that just puts it in the game. Then it waits five seconds, and then it changes our debounce to false. So this here is the time on how often a player is able to click on the button to spawn a new item. I've got it on five seconds. So a player is only able to click this button every five seconds and it's not consistent. It just kind of limits down how many items that they're able to spawn. Now you can go and change this accordingly. If you don't want a debounce and you don't want a limit or like a count or like a cool down, I guess you could say, you just delete the wait time and then job done. But if you want it to be longer, you just you just change it accordingly. This is all calculated in seconds. So if you're wanting two minutes, you'd put 120 seconds, one minute, 60 seconds, just kind of like that. You just gotta play around with it and see whatever works best for you. So anyway, that's it all done. So I'm gonna go click on the X button up here next to our script. And now we're gonna go and test it out. So I'm just gonna make sure our part is anchored there. That's anchored and job done. And I'm just gonna move the spawn point a little closer so we can test. Let's go click on play to go test it out. As you guys can see, we are now here in the base plate. If I go click on this button over here, no Jeep is seen at the moment. I go click on the button. As you guys can see, the Jeep has now spawned and then the player is able to go and do what they like with it. Um, just to show you on how that debounce works though, if I go and click on the button now and I spam click, only after five seconds will another Jeep spawn. And as you guys can see, it just limits the player from being able to spam the button to get a whole mountain of Jeeps around here. So now we're going to be moving on to system two. Now system two spawns the item when a player goes and touches or walks over a part. So what we're going to be using is we're going to be using kind of like a little bit of a, I guess you could say like a spawner pad. So when a player walks over this little part over here, then the item is going to be spawned. So you want to go and create your, I guess you could call it a spawner pad here. So once you've gone and customized your spawner pad, I'm going to click on it over here, click on the plus button and insert a normal script. So now that you've inserted a script inside of your spawner pad, you now want to go down to the description of this video, copy and paste script two. It's going to be called something like spawner pad script. You want to go and remove all the previous code and then paste in the new code. And as you guys can see, it is a very basic, pretty much similar script to what we had before. Uh, so I'm just going to quickly go over it here just so you can kind of get a little bit of a better understanding. So here on line one, it goes local item equals game dot server storage dot your item name. So the same thing as we did previously, you want to go and change your item name to whatever the item that is spawning is called. So as you guys remember, my one is called the Jeep. We've got our debounce here, it goes local debounce equals false. That's just our uh, spam prevention, I guess you could say. Then we create a local function, which is called on touched. So this is what happens when a player actually touches that part. So then it goes, if not debounce, then so if our debounce is false, it then changes it to true. Then it goes local new item equals item clone, exactly how we did it before in the previous code. It's just creating and cloning our item inside of our service storage. Then it's changing the parent to our workspace, which puts it in the game. Then it waits five seconds. And then that's basically our, I guess you could say our cooldown. And then you're able to change that to however long you want that cooldown to be. So the player, it's, it's just basically pretty much spam prevention. And then it changes our debounce back to false, basically allowing the player to to then go and click the button again. So then down here on line 14, it goes script.parent.touched, connect on touched, and this calls our local function. So when our script.parent is touched, it then calls our local function that is up here, and then all of this will then play. So what we're gonna go do now, we've gone and changed everything we need to go and do. So I'm gonna go click on the X button up here next to our script, and then we're gonna go and test it out just over here in the play area. So as you guys can see, we've got our click detector there, and then here is our spawn pad. So if I go walk in our spawn pad now, you'll be able to see that this, uh, the item spawns, and then the player is able to drive around and do whatever they like with it. But as you guys can see, just to show you how the debounce works, is when I go walk on the pad, not a bazillion of these Jeeps are spawning. Only after five seconds will another one spawn because I am touching the actual item over here. So it just kind of limits down on how often a player is able to actually spawn an item. So we're now gonna be moving onto system three, the final system for this tutorial. So how this next system works is when a player actually goes and clicks onto a GUI button, then the item will spawn. So first of all, we need to now go and create our GUI that the player is gonna be clicking on to spawn the item. So I'm gonna head over here to our start GUI, click on the plus button, insert a screen GUI. Then inside of our screen GUI, I'm gonna click on the plus button again, insert just a standard text button. I'm just gonna really do n nothing overly detailed. Obviously you can customize it to how you like, it's totally up to you. But we've got our button there and that will do the job for now. I'm then gonna go click on the plus button next to our text button and insert a local script. Now this 
system kind of does have two different parts to it. Um, basically, what the reason why we have to do this is simply because you can't control a server-sided thing in a local script. Um, it just it just doesn't work. It doesn't support it. So basically, what we have to do here in this script is fire a remote event, which will then go and trigger the script elsewhere in our game to then go and place it. So it's kind of got two parts to it. So now that you've inserted a local script inside of your text button, obviously you can use an image button also, it's totally up to you. But now that we've got our script, we want to go down to the description of this video, copy and paste in script 3, it's going to be called something like GUI button script. You want to go back to Roblox Studio, remove all the previous code, and then paste in the new code. Now as you guys can see, it is a very basic, simple, straightforward piece of code again, exactly like all the others. We just identify our main areas up here, so I'm just going to quickly go over it so you can get a little bit of a better understanding, and you know on the things that you actually need to go and change. So here on line one it goes local replicated storage equals game get service replicated storage. This is will eventually be used when we fire our remote event. It will make a little bit more sense here soon once we get to the next line. So this identifies our replicated storage which goes to the game get service replicated storage which is a folder inside of your explorer. Then it goes local spawn item event equals replicated storage wait for child spawn item. So now all of this we don't have any of this so what we need to actually go and do now before we continue with this is we need to go over to our replicated storage click on the plus button and insert a remote event now if you don't see remote event here right at the top you just search up remote event just like that and then you go and insert a remote event inside of your replicated storage now you want to go and change remote event to something that you will um, easily remember so for example we could change this to um, uh, uh, spawn event or spawn item for example you could really change it to whatever so if you name it to i know tom and jerry you can go and change it to tom and jerry for example but i've just gotten and put spawn item that is our name of our remote event so i'm going to go back to the script here now and now i'm going to go and change this one to whatever our item is actually gone and been called so as you guys remember my one is a spawn item and actually i've already got spawn item here so i don't need to go and change it but if you've gone and changed it to for example tom and jerry then you go and change it to Tom and Jerry just like that. But because ours is not called Tom and Jerry, ours is called Spawn Item, I'm going to go and type in Spawn Item just like that. We're basically identifying our remote event inside of our replicated storage. Then here on line three, it goes local debounce. That is, again, just your cooldown, pretty much just spam prevention. Then it goes script.parent.mouse button one click connect function. So when our script.parent, so we're now back here in the local script, when our script.parent is actually clicked using the mouse button, it will then go and create a function. So it goes script.parent.mouse button one click script.parent when it's clicked by the mouse, it will then go and create a function. If not debounce, if our debounce is false, then the debounce is going to be set to true. Then spawn item fire service. And now we're going back to over here to our variable called spawn item event, which is identifying our remote event name. As you guys remember, our one is called spawn item. So then it goes to our spawn item event and then it fires the server. This fires that event. And then we will eventually get that to that here shortly soon. So then we've got our main um, uh, fire of the server. Then it waits five seconds. Again, this is just kind of uh, spam prevention. You can go and change it to how you like. And then it changes our debounce back to false, exactly how we had it just before. Now, with this fire server, what we need to now go do is we want to go and close the script. We can leave it just like this because everything in here is done. Um, so I'm going to head over to our server script service just over here. Click on the plus button and insert a normal script. So now they've inserted a script inside of your service script service, you want to go down to the description of this video, copy and paste in script 3.5, copy that, bring that back to Roblox Studio, remove all the previous code, and then paste in the new code. Now, as you guys can see, it's very much pretty similar to all the other codes that we've worked with, but this is now just controlling it when the event has been triggered. Anyway, so here on line one, it goes local replicated storage. This identifies our replicated storage exactly we did, as we did here in the uh, local script. It just goes and finds our replicated storage, which is holding our remote event then local spawn item event replicated storage wait for child spawn item if as this is again our remote event so if you went and changed this to tom and jerry you go and change it to tom and jerry for example but because our remote event is gone and being called spawn item we can leave it just like that 
local item equals game dot service storage dot your item name you want to go and change your item name to whatever the item that is going to be spawning is called so as you guys remember my one was called jeep so i'm going to go and type in jeep just like that then here on line five it goes local function on spawn item so this creates us a local function which is eventually called down here local new item equals item clone this is, clo is cloning our item as we did before here in this, um, this uh, server storage it duplicates our item and then makes it go into our game and the new item dot parent equals game dot workspace it puts the new item that has been cloned into our game so then here on line 10 it goes spawn item event on server event it then connects and then it calls our local function that we had identified up there and then all of this happens and then that's pretty much it that is your main function that is going to be happening and what will be happening to the item so once you've saved all of those scripts we're going to go click on play here to go test it out so as you guys can see we're now here in the base play and if i go click on our button over here a jeep will spawn and if i go spam click it no other jeeps will spawn only after five seconds will another jeep spawn and as you guys can see we can kind of go do whatever we really want with it now so to go through over all of these three systems again we've got the gui button that we just worked on we've got the click detector and then we've also got the touchpad that spawns in those other items and as you guys can see all three of them work correctly and there you have it that is how you can go and create your very own item spawner in your roblox game if you guys are a little bit lost and you're needing a little bit of assistance with this tutorial please feel free to create a ticket in my discord server and we'd be more than happy to help you out but anyway guys that is going to be it here for today's video if you did enjoy i'd appreciate if you do consider subscribing to the channel turning on the notification bell and also do consider liking the video i'd really appreciate it but anyway have an amazing rest of your day and i'll see everyone in the next roblox studio video